Merci beaucoup, Jean-Marc. I'm going to speak in English, but I would first like to say hello to Sylvie. Et je suis très heureux de vous voir ici, une fois de plus. Uh, of course, President Sambetti, who has been helping us so much in the full development of the um, Venice, Venice Declaration. And I hope he will still do it, by the way. Uh, I'm sure he will. Uh, Renata Kasmarska, focal point of the family of the EU Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Susana Camarero, eh, yo pienso que es una gran adquisición para la declaración de Venecia y no me corresponde decirlo, pero pienso que también para Elisa eh, de la Generalitat Valenciana. Eh, Jana Zamaro, we just listened to her, the mayor of Fiuli, eh, thanks very much for being here. Eh, Miesco, eh, and Marie Chavanon, Luciano Malfer, and of course the Director of International Relations of the Veneto region, who's here uh, supporting us so much as we need it. As you know, we are commemorating the 30th anniversary of the International Year of the Family. And for this occasion, the United Nations has been analyzing for basic mega trends, as they are called, which include technological advancements, migration, urbanization, demographic shifts, and climate change. To understand their impacts on families and to propose responsive family-centered policies. I must uh, thank here Renata and the whole division of inclusive social development because I think this has helped us a lot to understand even better what the role of families in development is. To understand the, their impacts on families and to propose those responses. Sustainable urbanization with affordable housing, um, which is basic for Sustainable Development Goal 11 is essential for family formation and well-being, influencing the health and welfare of family members. I can tell the translation to Spanish is quite good, so I'm happy, <laughs> happy about it. This underscores the importance of creating inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable cities for families, an emphasis, as you know, we have been promoting at IFFD. And this urges us to come together and concentrate on sustainable urbanization to ensure that families can access decent houses uh, and enjoy public spaces conducive to intergenerational interactions. Adopting a family perspective could assist and does assist in designing cities that cater to residents of all ages and address their needs. Families need access to adequate housing, pollution-free environments, public transportation, healthcare, education, culture, safety, green public spaces, and more. The United Nations system advocates for sustainable urban development worldwide. The UN Human, Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat, aims from a better urban future by promoting socially and environmentally sustainable human settlements, development, and ensuring adequate shelter for all. The United Nations system-wide strategy on sustainable urban development supports member states in investing in sustainable urban development to achieve the 2030 agenda through collaborative implementation of the new urban agenda. Renata was mentioning before that the United Nations is interested in hearing good practices from us. If I may, I would add that we should be interested in knowing very well what the UN has said about this 
action-oriented new urban agenda document which mobilize member states and stakeholders to drive sustainable urban development at the local level, envisioning participatory cities and settlements that promote civic engagement and prioritize green public spaces conducive to family well-being. And also inside the UN, the Division for Social Inclusive Development, where the focal point of the family is found, supports civil society initiatives such as the Veni Declaration on Inclusive Cities for Sustainable Families promoted by IFFT, as we can see here today, mobilizing local projects and advocating for intergenerational living arrangements with shared services, addressing the needs of vulnerable groups like single parents, large and migrant families. This project targets cities and territories aiming to actively contribute to SDG 11 by being inclusive of sustainable families and responsive to their needs. Signatories commit to follow up and track progress on the 10 points contained in the Venice Declaration by contributing to the Good Practices Platform. Currently, 237 territories, including cities and regions, have joined the Inclusive Cities and Sustainable Families Project by signing the Venice Declaration. Signatories pledge to monitor progress on the 10 points of the Declaration according to urban area competencies by contributing to the Good Practices Platform. So I take this opportunity to encourage those already involved in this project to use its resources and engage in the exchange of good practices with other signatories. To those who haven't yet signed the Venice Declaration, I invite you to consider participating in this initiative. Let me add that to the two new signatories we had so far, the city of Rio Grande do Sul and the city of Barueri in Brazil will be further increased here tomorrow by the accession of the Generalitat Valenciana to which I take this opportunity to publicly congratulate from here. We support the new urban agenda, therefore, and advocate for integrating an intergenerational perspective in designing family-friendly cities. Secure urban environments are crucial for children and youth to attend the school safely and access recreational opportunities, including sports facilities. Accessible transportation, as I already mentioned, mobility are essential for all generations, including older persons, young people, persons with disabilities, and families with children. We also emphasize the importance of grassroots efforts, particularly locally sustainable initiatives. Participatory budgeting, allowing city residents to vote for projects enhancing urban living, such as playground construction and public utility infra infrastructure is vital. Encouragingly, members of our project have implemented participatory planning methodologies, collecting spatial data to enhance social cohesion among migrant, displaced, and host communities. And I want to take this opportunity to announce my firm commitment, as some of you already know, to dedicate myself from now on in a more prioritized manner to the training of young people in advocacy through courses and other academic activities for which I offer myself in your respective regions. We already have a good number of universities with which we are going to collaborate, and our aim is to ensure a more scientific and professional future to address the many challenges that the future poses for European and global families. Let's work together more livable, green, and sustainable cities for all generations, advocating for long-term public-private partnerships to invest in affordable housing, infrastructure, and public green spaces for urban families worldwide. We have just presented our annual 
IFFD award to a Korean civil society institution, the Blue Tree Foundation. And I would like to conclude with a definition of sustainability that their president gave us in their acceptance speech. We will work for a sustainable future if we preserve the living memory of the past, the critical vision of the present, and the unyielding hope of the future. Only this combination of the three elements will allow us to continue advancing without a nostalgic view, without routine, and without fear. Thank you very much.